we gather in this sacred space, made more sacred in this moment by the presence and attention of each and every one of us. Last week, we welcomed attendees by live stream from local cities and from Austin, Texas and Denver, Colorado. Last week, we also had audio issues for the first 15 minutes of the service. To our live streaming friends of last week, we apologize for the radio silence. But friends of this week, regardless of where you're logging on from, we are so glad you are here. In a spirit of welcome, I invite those who have gathered in the sanctuary to greet those who are attending by live stream by turning towards the camera near the welcoming congregation banner and waving hello from where you are. And those here in the sanctuary, let's take a moment to turn and greet one another. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Stephen Parapellic, and Harris Gibson and I are today's worship associates. It's so good to be with you this morning, both in the sanctuary or virtually. Thank you. We welcome your joy, your hope, your pride, as well as your grief, your fear, your anger, even the parts of you that are not ready to be seen and heard. Thank you for joining us, we who strive to share a teaching of hope and peace. We welcome all in our doors, the joyful, the heartbroken, atheists and, and Christians, Muslims and Jews, straight and gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, musicians, and all <laughs> who are searching, seeking, looking for more meaning, love, service, and music. Whether it's your first worship service with us or your several hundredth time, we hope that you'll discover questions that stretch you, people to befriend you, and liberal religious values that challenge you to join us in loving boldly, living justly, and welcoming openly. Together, we are a caring community devoted to spiritual growth, social transformation, and environmental responsibility. Today is Music Sunday. While the pandemic interfered with us celebrating Beethoven's birthday a few years ago, it's never too late to make a joyful noise. So after worship, all are invited to coffee, refreshments, and conversation in the Sims room behind you. Those wanting to remain masked are invited to linger in the pews. If you are not eating or drinking, please consider remaining masked and socializing in the sanctuary. And speaking of eating and drinking, there is a brunch for those who are new to the congregation and those who wish to greet our newcomers. It's at noon in the Michelin Room. Our new friends, we hope you can join us. And now let us open our hearts and minds to the spirit of worship with our responsive invocation. Please join me in reading responsively, <clears throat> reading number 441 in the Gray Hymnal, To Worship by Jacob Trapp. I will read the text in standard type, and the community will respond with the text in italics. Let us begin. To worship is to stand in awe under a heaven of stars, before a flower, a leaf in sunlight, or a grain of sand. To worship is to work with dedication and with skill. It is to pause from work and listen to a strain of music. To 
Worship is a loneliness seeking communion. It is a thirsty land crying out for rain. Worship is the mystery within us reaching out to the mystery beyond. I now invite worship associate Harris Gibson to dedicate our chalice with words by Elandria Williams. Our music committee chair, Dirk Stryker, will kindle its flame. We rise from pain. We rise from grief. We arise from the limits people place on us and the limits we place upon ourselves. We rise to be the children and the ancestors. We rise to be our own true selves. Our true selves in relationship to our families and our communities. We light our challenge in the celebration of the human capacity and to rise and resist in the face of adversity. We rise every Sunday in body or in spirit to sing. Let us rise to join in singing hymn number 39 in the Gray Hymnal. <laughs>
And if I can have all the young people and young at heart come down and join me for our um, little story. Anyway, as you come around, come on down. We're going to fill in these little pews over here. I'll even move my baton. Come on down. And I, you don't all know me, but I am John Kramer. I'm music director here. I know you get to work with you sometimes. It's really good to see you all here. And I'm going to sit down here. And I wanted to talk to you. Yeah, thank you. I'm just fill on in. There's some faces right there, too. Yeah, right there. Come on. No, no. So I want to talk to you a little bit about music and a little bit about today's star, Beethoven. Who knows anything about Beethoven? Any fun facts about Beethoven? Yes. He was deaf. He became deaf in his 20s. Can you imagine being a musician and not being able to hear? It was a really big deal. What else we know about Beethoven? He was a really, he was a superstar pianist. He was like the best pianist in the world in his day. And he was legendary for his performances. Everyone wanted to go see him. It was like really amazing. He was like bigger than uh, Madonna. I don't know who. <laughs> he was bigger than Beyonce. Um, what, else, what else do we know about uh, Beethoven? Does anybody know when Beethoven lived? That's where he was. he was. He was actually born in what is now known as Germany. Actually, it wasn't Germany then, which is complicated. But it is Germany now. Um, and he is considered a German composer. Does anybody know about what time in history Beethoven was alive? And it's OK if you don't. He was, he was born in 1770, right? That's a long, long time ago. Three years ago, we were going to celebrate his 250th birthday. We weren't able to do it then. But we're doing it now, which is awesome. So. What happened, do we, there is actually a date that we probably know that will help you think about when Beethoven was alive. Do you know what happened in this country that was important in 1775? What happened like right next door in Lexington and Concord in 1775? 77, 75, 76? But it started in 75. There was big huge thing. It's the reason we're not part of Britain right now. <laughs> yes! The Revolutionary War, right. <laughs> Beethoven was five when the United States declared war against Britain, right? So that's kind of a, if you think about that history, you've probably learned about or you'll learn about in school, that's when Beethoven was alive. And there's an interesting idea I just wanted to kind of think about that Beethoven and our founding father, as they say, who were a lot of Unitarians. So a lot of faith is born out of the same ideas that Beethoven was thinking about which is whole concept is a big word called enlightenment. Oh, enlightenment. Enlightenment. The word I wanted, the part of the word I want you to think about is light. You know when a light bulb goes off, ding in your head, and you have like a new idea? Yeah. That's sort of like the enlightenment. But enlightenment is like on a big scale. Like everybody has a light bulb go out of the head. Like a whole culture changes. <laughs> it's like a lightning, it's like a lightning bolt. It is, yeah, exactly. For everybody. So that's the enlightenment. And uh, both our founding fathers was around the same time that Beethoven was alive. And Beethoven really got a lot of strength from that. Ideas about nature, ideas, different ideas about, about God. And a lot of the things that we celebrate today are because people thought those things so, so long ago. There's another thing I want to think about. Some of us mentioned that Beethoven was, was deaf. And he yeah. became deaf in his 20s. So he actually, as a young, young man, he was really famous. He was touring all over. Europe playing all these concerts, writing all these concertos. Everybody was like, oh my God, Beethoven's amazing. And then he started losing his hearing, and it was very, very difficult for him, as you can imagine. But he was able to continue, and he was able to continue by, because he was able to imagine music in his head. And I, I wonder if anybody's actually done that, because it's kind of a little thing. Yeah, I actually wanted to just take a minute, or actually even 30 seconds, for us all in this room, and it might be just that beautiful music we just heard, or something else, just take a smoke and, and try to hear music in your head to imagine what it must be like for Beethoven. Ready? And sometimes it can be as vivid as the music we hear. You can tell me later what music you were hearing in your head. Um, so there's a couple things we want to think about Beethoven um, when he was born, and um, of course all the amazing music he gave us. But we're going to sing you out to your our E classes now. So here we go.
I now invite us into a time of centering, first through words and then through ritual, kindling of the light, a time to light a candle here in the sanctuary or at home to signify a joy or sorrow you carry within. At that time, if you would like a candle brought to you, please raise your hand. Due to the reconfiguration of the front of the sanctuary, those lighting a candle at the candle table are asked to avoid using the center aisle and line up along the side. After we kindle the light, we'll be together during a time of shared silence. And out of the silence, we will sing an English translation of a short round composed by Beethoven. The words and music can be found in your order of service or as a graphic on your screen. Let us begin. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Spirit of life and love, God who bears witness to all of our days, we come this day seeking the wisdom of the ancestors, our people of memory whose lives testify to the power of resilience and resistance. May their courage guide us as we seek to persevere in our own lives, in our own time. May we find the conviction to manifest change, our sin-sick relationship with guns in this nation, our failure to protect our children, our persecution of the feminine and the genderqueer, our silencing of the artists and historians telling hard stories, our silence in response to the shouts of alarm on an ever more crowded and warming earth. May we find our conviction and through our daring and stewardship of one another, may we find our way to hope. Hope for a future all can imagine living in Hope for the youngest in our circle, in need of our tender attention. Hope for those yet to come, the beings of a world made fair, a world we dream of and work to make real in the days of our time. Let us now kindle the light.
It was March 8, 2020. I remember that Sunday well as it was that Sunday that comes once a year, the one where we change our clocks and arrive to worship a little groggy from losing an hour of sleep. In recognition of this annual morning of light suffering, I preached a sermon about the importance of sleep. But before the sermon, during the announcements, we asked people to be mindful of physical proximity and contact in an abundance of caution. In response to the virus, we were suddenly hearing so much about. So moving to daylight savings time became somewhat of a pandemic anniversary. This year, as we again change the clocks, I recognize that it has been three years since COVID changed everything. I didn't have to remind myself as a mental exercise, as with other traumatic things, the body remembers. On March 8th, 2020, I had no idea that this would be the last time in a long time we would worship together in our sanctuary. Losing the freedom to worship in this glorious space was the first in an unimaginable wave of losses. Within and beyond our congregation, so many events were canceled, some important rites of passage like graduations and weddings. We set aside our plans for Music Sunday, a service that would have included Linda Reck in the choir, and if she was feeling well, Madeline Smith in the pews, I mourn their swift declines and deaths to COVID. The losses of life have been the hardest losses of all. Losing Linda and Madeline to the virus reflected how so many lost loved ones within this congregation and beyond. And those who contracted COVID and survived, some are still deeply affected by the impact of this disease, a loss of health, strength, and capacity. Losing the simple freedom of meeting friends for dinner or visiting grandchildren, the impact on our livelihoods, the loss of normal school life for our children, the death of promising careers for healthcare professionals and educators, all of this happening against the backdrop of an indifferent federal administration, rising violence and political division. I don't know about you, but there was no way my heart could hold all these things as they unfolded. My grieving process has been erratic. As we affirmed in our recent Good Grief series, mourning is deeply individual, following its own calendar and process for each one of us. As the cloud of this time begins to lift, some of the sorrow I've been carrying deep within is beginning to emerge. I know it will all come forward when the time is right, and when it emerges, it may not be through words. For artists, creating can be something beyond ecstatic expression. Art can be a celebration, or a protest, or a lamentation, or a memorial. The anthem that follows is Beethoven's remembrance for a philosopher and poet dedicated to a dear friend in response to his wife's death. May there be something in this music, in these voices, to minister to the sorrow you bear from this hard season and from the many losses we endure throughout our lives.
make an offering to the ministries of a congregation is to make a public affirmation of our values, an investment in what is possible, and an acknowledgement that our resources are not ours alone. The offering is, in this way, part of a collective Sunday morning spiritual practice. Part of this practice here at WUS is to share our gifts every week with organizations living out Unitarian Universalist values. This morning, I have a special ask of our congregation. This past fall, we lost a member of our community, a young woman, Brenda Martino, to suicide. It is so hard surviving the death of a loved one and losing someone to suicide is particularly difficult. Our hearts continue to go out to Brenda's family and countless friends as they mourn her absence from their lives. Brenda's mother, Ginger Hansen, will be participating in the Out of the Darkness Walk in June in Washington, D.C., benefiting the American Foundation <clears throat> for Suicide Prevention, whose mission is to give those affected by suicide a nationwide community empowered by research, education, and advocacy to take action against this leading cause of death. I am leading a WUS team to participate in a local walk to benefit AFSP on Saturday, April 22nd. We walk in hopes of saving lives. We walk to remember Brenda. We walk to show our solidarity with Ginger as she prepares for her walk in June. Ginger will be part of the local team. There are many ways you can support this effort and to remember Brenda. Sign up to join the local walk on April 22nd. The link can be found in your order of service and will soon be posted on the live stream. There will be other reminders and more information and highlights. You've seen the invitations to purchase a WUS t-shirt. The words on the back, may our love be like a circle, no beginning and no end. Echo a motto Brenda painted on a mur mural during her service trip to West Virginia. We included these words so whoever wears a WUS t-shirt carries Brenda's spirit with them, but also in hopes of forming a WUS walking team. Buy a shirt and help carry her message throughout the world. Or please give generously to today's offering. Half of our collection will help sponsor the WUS walking team in April. Here are the different ways you can donate. Those in the sanctuary may give cash, checks, or donate electronically. Text to the number in your order of service or visit our website under the giving page. If you are visiting for the first time, either in person or online, you are our guest. In-person attendees can find a physical visitor card in the pew, packs, pew racks in front of you. Please complete it and put it in the collection plate. Information about how to give online, how to complete the virtual visitor card, and a link to join the WUS team for the April 22nd walk will soon be shared with live stream attendees through text on your screen. The offering will now be generously given and gratefully received.
those who wish to do so are invited to join in the unison affirmation. We gather not for ourselves alone, but to use our common power to build the beloved community within and beyond these walls. We create and reaffirm the covenant this day to make justice flourish, to practice compassion amidst differences, and to embody transformative love. Sometimes an artist gives voice to another's sorrow. Sometimes they themselves know despair. We've heard Beethoven's beautiful piece written to soothe his friend's broken heart. And we've been reminded that when faced with a life they cannot bear, some choose to end their lives. After Beethoven's death, a letter was found among his papers, a letter he wrote to his brothers. In this letter, Beethoven bemoans his fate. As we know, he was a musician who lost his hearing. Deaf people now have so many options for navigating the world, but I imagine that Beethoven becoming deaf was like losing the very center of his identity. In this letter, Beethoven acknowledges he considered ending his life. But Beethoven found a way through. As he wrote, only art it was that withheld me. Ah, uh, it seemed impossible to leave the world until I had produced all that I felt called upon me to produce. So I endured this wretched existence. As John named, as Beethoven composed, he imagined the sounds in his mind and persevered. Some say human beings create religions in response to the reality that life is forever unpredictable and fragile with no guarantee of happiness. Looking back over the past few years, there was no certainty that any of us would be blessed enough to be here this morning to make and experience this beautiful music. I imagine many of you were like me, trying to figure out the next right thing to do to make it to tomorrow. Somehow, so many days later, we can now look back and affirm that we, too, persevered. This Sunday morning, I celebrate that we together are the hope we longed for three years before. I pray for those struggling to imagine a future they can thrive in. And I know life remains fragile and unpredictable. But in this moment, on this Sabbath morn, I rejoice that we are here together in gratitude, in memory, and in hope. Let us sing of joy.
Now please rise, either in body or spirit, to join in singing hymn number 29, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Our faith sustain us, our hope inspire us, and our love surround us as we go our separate ways, knowing we will gather again in this beloved community. Go in peace. Amen.
please join me and Harris for reading together the words for extinguishing the chalice. This service has ended, but our life of service continues. Let's continue our conversation in the Sims room during coffee hour and during the newcomer brunch at noon. Thanks, everyone. Mediocre expectations.